بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We'll start the recording. Yeah, we'll continue this section 4.2. We did roles theorem. I think only one one uh, one problems uh, missing. We'll do this, and then we'll go to the mean value theorem. Okay, the constant C that satisfies the roles theorem for this. If you remember, roles theorem saying what the function is continuous. Yes, in this interval. Since minus two is not part of this, so f is continuous in this interval, undifferentiable, and open interval. Yeah, and f of minus one will be what? Will be one plus two minus three. That will be zero. And f of three will be what? Nine minus six minus three, which is zero. Also. Okay. So the row theorem condition satisfied. Yeah. Do we need to do that in the exam? In general, yes. But since he asked there is a constant C satisfies this, it means embedded that the the row theorem a condition that are satisfied. Okay, now let us find the C, which I need f prime at C equals zero. So let us find what is f prime. Yeah. A prime will be what? Derivative of the numerator, 2x minus 2 times the denominator, x plus 2 minus the denominator, which is 1 times the numerator, over the denominator square. That should equal to 0. That means what? Yeah, 2x squared minus 6 squared, that will be x squared, minus 2x plus 4x plus 2x. Wait a minute. Let me do it in steps. Minus 2x plus 4x plus 2x. Yeah, so that will be 4x. Okay. Now I have minus 4 plus 3. So I have what? x squared. This is the numerator. Put this. I have x squared. Yeah, plus 4x minus 1 over this. That will be equal to zero. That means what? X squared minus four, four x minus one equals zero. <laughs> this is, I cannot factor it, but I can solve it using the quadratic formula. I have x equal what? Minus b, that's the minus square root, b squared. b squared is what? 16 minus four ac, which is plus four over two. That will be minus four, this is 20. 20, which is four times five. 2 square root of 5 over 2. So I have what? Um, divide by 2 plus or minus square root of 5. Okay. So I have C1 minus 2 plus square root of 5 and C2 2 plus square root of 5. Yeah. Are they in the interval? Are they in this interval? Okay. Square root of 5 is what? 2 point something. Yeah, it's more than square root of 4, so it should be 2 point something. So this is will be what? Point O something, which is in the interval. Yeah. Now this one, 2 plus 2, that will be 4 point something, which is not in the interval. So I have only one C, which is this one, which is minus 2 plus square root of 5. Yeah. Now let me move to the mean value here. By 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 the way, the mean value theorem is the um well, let me say the role theorem is a special case with the mean value theorem. It says what the mean value theorem if f is continuous in the closed interval and differentiable in the open interval, he does not say anything about f of a and f of b. Right away, there exists a number c in a b in this interval such that f prime at c equal f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Notice if a equal to b, if f of a equal f of b, then I have a prime of c equal zero, which is the Roth theorem. So Roth theorem is a special case of this. What's the idea? The idea if look at if you look at this one, if you look at this one, this is the slope of the secant line. If you have two points, so this is the slope of the secant line. It says what? Mean by the theorem. It says at the point C. The slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line at 
there is a point C between A and B such that the slope of the tangent equals the slope of the secant line joining the points A and B. And yeah, we can have more than one, but it's still the same thing. The slopes are the same. The slope, I'm not thinking about the lines or the slope of the lines since they are parallel to each other. Okay, <clears throat> so there is a point in the, in the graph where the tangent line is parallel to the line joining this. So the slopes are equal. We can extend this to the velocity idea. Since the average velocity, this is the average velocity we have going from A to B, and this is the instantaneous velocity. It means what? The average velocity, um, yeah, starting from the point from t equal a to t equal b, at the, at, the, at the certain point c, it will equal the instantaneous velocity. And the same thing for the rate of change, you can extend it to the rate of change, since these are the definition of the derivative. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I need to check this function. Let me do this function 5 minus 4 over x. He said, write all values of c in the open interval says that this. This is the mean value theorem. So this is a prime as c equal this, which is the same thing, where a is equal to 1 and b equal to 4. And this is the f. If it's continuous on the open interval, actually we have problem actually at 0, where it's not in the interval. And if it's differentiable on the open interval. This is what I need. Okay, now let us find f prime. A prime will be what? 4 over x squared. Minus, minus 4 over x squared. Okay, plug the numbers in half. So you have 4 over c squared equal. f of 4, what is f of 4? 5 minus 4 over 4, so it is 4 minus. f of 1, it will be 4. What is this? 5, no, this is 4. f of 1, it will be 5 minus 4, which is 1. Over 4 minus 1. So it's equal to 1. So you have c squared equal 4. So c equal what? Plus or minus 2. Be careful here. 2 and minus 2. This does not belong to the interval. So this is out of the picture. This is belongs to the interval. So what are the c values? c equal 2 only. Okay. Sometimes we have more than one. But in this case, we have only one. Another function. Let me do the same. This is a. This is the function. This is b equal 2. Just to be sure we have. So the function is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. Okay, so there exists a C belongs to this interval, 0 and 2, such that F prime at C equal F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So what is the prime at C? Well, let me check F prime. F prime is what? 3x squared minus 1. So I have 3x is 3c squared minus 1. F of B, 2, it will be at 8 minus 2, which is 6. F of 0 is 0. Over 2 minus 0, that will be 3. So I have 3c squared equal to 4. So c squared equal 4 over 3. So C equal what? Uh, plus or minus, yeah, plus or minus 2 over root 3. So I have C1, 2 over root 3, and C2 equal minus 2 over root 3. This is, this is for sure does not belong to the interval. Yeah, so this is out of the picture. This one, yes, belongs to the interval. Since 2 is greater than square root of 3, so this is a number yeah, between 1 and 2. Okay, so it's in the interval. So the only C, 2 over square root of 3 only. This is rejected, huh? Since it's not in the interval. I'm talking about this problem. Okay. The term with the hypothesis is satisfied. Yes, let us check the function. <clears throat> this is the interval. This is the function. Yeah, the function continues. Actually, continues everywhere. And differentiable on this. That's it. This is what I need. So there exists a C. Belongs to the interval 0 and 3. So that F prime at C equal F of B minus F of A over B minus A. F prime of C over prime of X equal what? Minus 2 is minus 2X. So I have minus 2. Yeah. 
minus 2 e is minus 2 c equal f of 3. f of 3 is what? e is minus 6. f of 0 minus 1 over 6 minus, uh, over 3 minus 0, sorry. Over 3 minus. <coughs> that implies e is minus 2 c. Yeah, I just divide by minus 2. So I have what? e minus 6 minus 1 over minus 6. I can do it this way. Okay. So it will be e. So I have take ln of both sides. I have minus 2c equal ln of this. By the way, this is positive. Since this is the number less than 1, 1 minus a number less than 1, so it will be positive. So ln, ln is defined. Okay. So what will be c? C will be minus half ln of this. And by the way, this number is positive, all of it. Since this is ln of something less than 1, if you notice the ln, this is 1. Anything less than 1, the ln is negative. So this is negative. This is negative. So the answer is positive. So it's, it's positive, and it will be the interval. So it belongs to the interval 0 and 3. So this is my C. This is my C. OK. <clears throat> That is just an application. Um, assume you have um, a road where the speed limit is 55 kilometer or miles. He's, he's stating miles, okay. To 55, the speed limit. And the truck go through our car, um, and I think, yeah, you have two patrol station. You have, this is patrol, patrol cars, yeah, and, when he when the car reached here, the speed was fifty-five. There the speed was fifty. Okay. But let me tell you this. This distance is five. And if this is having a t equal zero, this having a t equal four. Four minutes. Okay, so it's going from this to this until it reaches this, it takes four minutes. Okay, but if you notice the speed is miles per hour, so I need to change this into 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 hours. So this is will be what four over sixty, which is one over fifteen hours. Okay, now I apply this. <clears throat> apply this. The average velocity between A and B, which is 0 and 1 over 15, the average velocity between t equals 0 and t equals 1 over 15 will equals the velocity, the instantaneous velocity at a point C in the interval 0 and 1 over 15. Okay, so what is the average velocity? The average. It will be S at 1 over 15 minus S at 0 over 1 over 15 minus 0. I know that this length is 5, so it's so all of this will be 5 over 115 is equal to 75. Uh -huh. That means what? This will be equal to F prime at C for a C between 0 and 1 over 15. It means his speed or his velocity reach 75 at a point, at a point C between, in this interval, 0 and 1 over 15, which is, which is this period. So somewhere here, it is speed reach 75. It means he deserves a ticket. He deserves a ticket. Because his speed exceeds the speed limit, which was 55 by 20 miles. At a point, we don't know what is that point, but there is, there is a point where his speed reached that. Okay, another application. Assume you have a function satisfy this and satisfy these things. You want to check how large 
of two possibly be? What is the largest value f of two can reach? Okay. Now he says if prime is less than equal to five for all values of x, means f is differentiable. A prime exists and less than or equal to five. And and that will need us f is continuous. Actually everywhere. Now I will take the interval. Zero and two, which is this and this. Okay. So now and I want to apply the mean values here. F is continuous. On this interval, yeah, I don't know what is f, but I can conclude this. f is differentiable on the open interval. Actually, it's differentiable and, and continuous for all values of x. But yeah, just just to apply the theorem means mean value theorem conditions satisfies. So that means what? There exists a c long to the interval zero and two, says that f prime at c f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. Yeah, so that means f prime at c. What is f of 2? I don't know. This is what I'm looking for. f of 0, he said, minus minus c, so that will be plus 3 over 2. But also I know that f prime at c, f prime at any value, is less than or equal to 5. So this is less than or equal to 5. So that will give me the answer. So I have f of 2 plus 3 less than or equal to 10. So have means that f of two less than or equal to seven. Okay. So I can I know I can know how large can f of two possibly be without knowing that the function. Just if I know some information about the function. Let let us go to the old exam questions. Okay. The sum of all values of c satisfy the conclusion mean value theorem. I have the function. This is continuous. Conditions are satisfied. As I said, do I need to do it? Uh, in the exam, unless he specified that is it satisfied, is it is this satisfying the conditions or not? So uh, no need no need to check that. Since it means yeah, it should be it should be satisfied. The conditions satisfied. There exists C. There exists C belongs to the interval zero and three such that f prime at c equal f of yeah f of three minus f of zero is it three and zero? yeah zero and three over three minus zero so what is f prime by the way yeah f prime is equal to x square minus three x plus two so i have c square minus 3c plus 2 equals f of 3. Yeah, what is f of 3? That will be 27 over 3, which is 9. Let me check f of 3 over 3 here. Yeah, because it needs calculation. f of 3 will be what? 27 over 3, that will be 9, minus 3 times 9, which is 27 over 2. Okay, plus 6 plus 1. So I have 9 plus 6 plus 1, that is 16. 16 minus 27 over 2, that is 32 minus 27, which is 5 over 2. So that will be 5 over 2 minus 1 over 3 minus 0. Yeah, I don't know why, why is putting the number this way. It's okay. That will be what? 3 over 6. 3 over 6, which is half. Am I right? Yeah. 3 over 2 over 3, yeah. So now multiply and get what? Let me give it more space. 2c squared minus 6c plus 4 is equal to 1. So you have 2c squared minus 6c plus 3 equals 0. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to find the c's. Can you factor it? But it's just to find f of 3, so no need to go back to it during the calculation. Can you factor this? Mm -hmm. It's very, very, uh, I'm not sure you can factor it or not. No, we cannot. So let me, let me solve the, this using the 
Yeah, quadratic form. I have six. The square root of b squared, 36 minus 4 times 3 times 2, which is 24 over 4. That give me what? Yeah. 6 plus or minus, this is 12. 12, which is 4 square root of 3. So that 2 square root of 3 over over 4 divide by 2 that will be 3 plus or minus square root of 3 over 2 okay so i have two values here i have c1 3 plus a square root of 3 over 2 Square root of three is something less than two. So three plus two, five over two. It's, so it's still in the in the interval. Zero and three. Actually, it's less than five over two, but just to, to be sure. So this is okay. Now let me check the other one. Three. Yeah, three minus the square root of three over two. 3 minus something. Yeah, it's still positive. So it's still in the interval between 0 and 3. I need to add them. If you add them, you will get what? Yeah, all over 2. So it's 3 plus the square root of 3 plus 3 minus the square root of 3 over 2. That will be 6 over 2, which is 3. So that will be the answer. Okay. The number of seats right the conclusion over this interval. The same thing. Function continuous, yeah, condition satisfied. Let me say MVT conditions are okay. So F prime, we're well, clear. Function is continuous, everything is clear. One plus two cosine to X. That should equal F of pi over two minus F of zero over by over two minus zero. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That will means what? One plus two cosine two x equals to what? Equal to yeah, if by over two will be what? By over two sine by zero, so that will be by over two. Zero I have zero plus zero, so it's minus zero over this uh-huh that will be one okay so i have two that will make it easier two cosine two x equal zero so i need cosine to cosine two x equal zero so it means x equal pi over two so x equal pi over four and that will be the answer c i mean c yeah can make it c c this is c Yeah, because we're looking for C usually. Okay. Consider this function, the value of C is satisfied this. The same as these conditions are satisfied. So I have F prime at C equal F of one minus F of zero over one minus zero. F of one is what? One plus E. Yeah, F of zero will be zero plus one minus one over one, so that will be e. And what is the prime of x? It's one plus e to the power x. So I have one plus e c equal e. So that means e c equal e minus one, which is positive. Take ln, so I have c, ln e minus one. Is that in this interval? Yeah, because this is greater than one. So that will be greater. Yeah, ln e minus one. Yeah. Yeah, lin e is one, so that will be for sure less than one and greater than zero. Yeah, so it's in the interval. If you look at the lin, at one is zero. This value is greater than one, so it for sure is greater than zero, but and lin at e is one. So e minus one is between one and e, so lin of that should be between zero and one. So at minus c is lin e minus one. More examples. Yeah, I think the idea is clear. Now we'll do more examples. Yeah, conditions are satisfied. Very clear continuous function. 
I need f prime at x, 3x squared minus 3. So I need f prime at c equal f of 2 minus f of minus 2 over 2 times minus minus 2. Yeah, be careful here. f of 2 equal what? It will be 8 minus 6 plus 2. That will be 4. f of minus 2, that is minus 8 plus 6 plus 2, which is 0. That's minus 0 over 4. That will be 1. Huh, good. f prime, it means 3c squared minus 3 equals to 1. So 3c squared equal 4. So c squared equal 4 over 3. So c will be equal 2 over root 3 or c1, c2 minus 2 root 3. Yeah, this belongs to the interval, which is minus 2 and 2. And it's the same thing of this one. Since it's the value between minus 1 and minus 2, here is the value between 1 and 2. So you have two values, which is this one. The value is by the conclusion of this over this interval. Yeah, the function has a problem only at x equal 3 over 4. The domain x gets an equal 3 over 4. And this is not, yeah, this is okay with this interval. So nothing to worry about. Let me check the f prime. f prime at x will be what? 1 over 2 root 4x minus 3 times 4. So that will be 2 over root 4x minus 3. Yeah, this is just the domain. Okay, domain of f. So I need f prime at c equal f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. What is f of 3? 12 minus 3 is 9. That will be 3. f of 1, 4 minus 3, that will be 1. Mm, everything is equal to 1. Uh, good. So I have 2 over root 4c minus 3 is equal to 1. So that means 2 equal 4c minus 3. Square it. So I have 4 equal 4c minus 3. So that means 4c equals 7. So c equals 7 over 4, which is okay here. So this is okay. So I'll take that. Yeah. I'm doing more problems. The same idea. The function is continuous only at minus 2. Minus 2 is not in this interval, so we can't deal with it. Let us do the calculation. So I have f prime at c will be f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. What is f prime? What is the prime at x? Derivative of this is 1 times x plus 2 minus x over x plus 2 square. So it will be 2 over x plus 2 square. Okay, so 2 over c plus 2 square equals what? f of 4. 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. 1, 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3 over 3. Yeah, I'm right. 1, yeah, 1 over 3, and this is 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. That gave me what? 1 over 3 over 3, that will be 1 over 9. So I have 18 equals c plus 2 square. Take the square root. I have a square root of 18, which is 9 times 2. That will be 3 a square root of 2 equal here plus or minus equals c plus 2. So I have two C's, C1, well, let me conclude that C is minus two plus this. Okay, so I have the C1 minus two plus three square root of two and C2 minus two minus three square root of two. This is 1.4 times three. So this is will be less than minus five, which is out the interval. This one will be what? Four point something. So this is yeah in the interval because it's it will be two point something. So this is in the interval, so this is my answer. Yeah, satisfies this in the interval. Yeah, we satisfy the conclusion mean value theorem. So yeah, the function is continuous. If I have a problem only at one, which is okay, because this is I want it uh, x greater equal to one, so it's continuous there. But the differentiable, I need to open interval, which is okay. Okay, so now f prime will be what? Will be 1 plus 1 over 2 root x minus 1. Okay, so f 
prime at c equal f of 5 minus f of 1 over 5 minus 1. f of 5 will be what? 5 plus 2, which is 7. 1 minus 1 over 5 minus 1. That gives me what? 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So I have 1 plus 1 over 2 root x minus 1 equals 3 over 2. So I have 1 over 2 root x minus 1 equals 3 over, equals take 1 to this side equal half. So it means what? Root x minus 1 is equal to 1. Square it, I have x minus 1 equal 1, so that implies x equal 2. I oh, see, I mean c, yeah, sorry. C, c. Yeah, c or x, yeah, just the value, which is talking about, but usually they make it c. So this is 2. The body is the conclusion mean by return for this function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the function is has a problem. Only x should be greater than minus three, which is okay with this one. So everything is okay, continuous and differentiable. Now we'll find f prime. We need to be careful. It's a product of two functions. That will be ln x plus three plus x plus three times what? X plus three one over. Okay, so it will be one plus ln x plus three. That will be f prime. So I need to check c, what f prime at c will be equal f of minus one minus f of minus two over minus one minus minus two. Yeah, be careful with the calculation. f of minus one will be what? It will be two, ln two. Okay. f of minus two, it will be one, ln one, which is zero. Over what? Minus 1 plus 2, which is 1. So I have 1 plus ln c plus 3 equal 2 ln 2. Yeah. Now I need to find the c. Okay. I need to solve this equation. Yeah, this is ln of c plus 3 equal 2 ln 2, which is ln 4 minus 1. Am I right? f of minus 1, minus 1 plus 3, this is 2, and this is 2 ln 2. And the 0 minus 2, it will be 1, and ln 1, which is 0. Okay. Calculation should be okay. Over minus 1, minus minus 2, minus 1 plus 2, which is one, okay. So this will be ln four. I took the minus one to the other side. So I noticed this, ln c plus three will be ln four minus ln e. Ah, this is the trick. So that equal ln four over e. So that implies c plus three equal four over e. Yes, and this length of this, this, the argument should equal to each other. So C equal 4 over E minus 3, which is 4 minus 3 E over E. By the way, this is from the book. Squishing is from the book. Okay. The value of E is as far as the mean value theorem. Okay. X over this, yeah. So we'll do the same calculation. Yeah, conditions are satisfied. I have problem at five, which is not in the interval, so everything is okay. So f prime at c, f prime at c, will be f of four minus f of one over four minus one. f prime at c, so I have c over c minus five equals. f of four will be what? Four over minus one, which is minus four. I have one minus. I have 1 over 1 minus 5, which is minus 1 over 4. Over 4 minus 1. Okay, so that give me what? Minus 4. It gives me minus, I uh, know, this is plus. Minus 4 plus 1 over 4. That give me minus 15 over 4 over 3. So it will be minus 15 over 12. Divide by 3 minus 5 over 4. So that means what? 4c equal minus 5.
t plus 25. I did the mistake somewhere. Yeah, f prime at c. Oh, oh, I need f prime, not the c. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is okay, but this side is wrong. So what is f prime at c? f prime at x. Derivative of the numerator, one times the denominator. Mm -hmm. Minus the denominator one, which is minus x over x minus five square. So that give me minus five over c minus five square. Okay, now I think it's okay. Now I have what c minus five square is equal to four. So c minus five equal plus or minus two. So c equal five plus or minus two. So I have c one seven and c two three. 7 is not in the interval. So this is out of the mixer. This is OK. So this is OK. So I have C equals 3. OK, I think I will stop the recording. I think we did a good number of questions. Let me stop the recording. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to have long videos. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>